Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got a quick video to show you how I made this faux Polaroid card featuring a digi stamp from Heartcraft Paper. Isn't it cute? I just love the way it turned out. You can see I printed out several images from the new release, but today I'm just going to be using the fo Foxy Love images here. I printed out onto white cardstock with my laser printer because I knew I'd be coloring with my Copics. I'm really no expert at coloring at all. I just lay down the darkest color where I think there should be shadows. I expand those areas a bit with my midtones, and then I like to fill in and blend with my lightest color. To give the fur some texture, I add little flicks of my darkest color. And you'll notice there's a big difference between my midtone and my lightest of the red browns. I just use the tip to tip method to bridge that gap a little bit. It won't hurt your markers at all. You can just clean the tip by coloring on a scrap until it returns to normal. I added uh, a little more texture to the fur with stippling. And then I went in and added uh, a little more shadows again. The great thing about alcohol markers is that you can keep playing until you're happy with what you've got. I'll finish coloring in the small details, but before I can add the color to my background, I'm going to need to figure out where my borders will be. You'll see in a second there's a square die that I use to make the window for my Polaroid frame. Uh, to determine the size of the frame, I just add a quarter inch to three sides and five eighths inch to the bottom. Once I have my frame cut out, I'll use it uh, to lightly trace a border around my image. Then I can cut it out and color in the background. By the way, I also use that same die to figure out how big to print my image in the first place. I really like digis. They're pretty awesome. You can print them out any size you want. For my background, I chose some soft aqua colors. I used the darkest color around the edges of the foxes to give them a little bit of depth. And then the mid and the lighter tones as I get further away from them. I tried to go over everything twice and keep my strokes going in the same direction as much as possible. That helps give you even coverage and a lot of saturation there. I used a ruler and a neutral gray to add the ground and the horizon. Really nothing fancy going on here, folks. I've got this cute little sentiment die from Reverse Confetti. I cut it out three times from black cardstock and then I cut out two more heavy white cardstock rectangles, the same size as my Polaroid. Then I'm going to start gluing everything together. I decided on extra layers of cardstock instead of foam for the dimension because I really like the stiffness. To me it, it seems more like a Polaroid. But you can go either way. As I'm gluing my sentiment pieces together, you see me messing with it a little bit. My cutting plate's getting old, so I've got a little bit of frayed edges, but they just brush right off. For my card base, I'm going to use a light gray wood grain cardstock that I cut down to four and a quarter by 11 inches, and I'll score it with my score pal and fold it to make a top folding A2 card base. Then I just start gluing my Polaroid and my sentiment to the card. And you'll notice I've got that big acrylic block to the side. I use that a lot. It helps hold things down while they're drying and keeps the edges from curling. You'll see me pull out a white gel pen here to add some details. A little more stippling to the foxes. And I add it to the hearts, but you'll notice in a second that I didn't let it dry and I pull out my Wink Estella glitter pen just to highlight those uh, hearts a little bit more but since the gel pen wasn't dry it kind of brushed it all away and I ended up liking it better with just the glitter so happy accident right? You'll see me sign the back of the card here before I add the glossy accents whenever I use this much glossy accents I really try to make it the very last thing I do to the card so I don't smear it and the reason I didn't cut that fox with the square die was so that I would have a little bit of a well with the frame on top. Worked out nicely. And I'll fill in with an even layer of glossy accents all over the place. This is, this is a pretty heavy layer of glossy accents, so I let it dry overnight. Um, and once it does dry, it becomes crystal clear. 
You'll see me pull out some more blocks, anything heavy I can find on my desk to help weigh down the edges. I don't want them to curl up as the glossy accents dries. And then that's it. Look at all that shine. I think it turned out really cute. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like today's video, hit subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.